House has once again invoked the Hatch Act to avoid tough questions, this time refusing to speak about the cocaine found inside the White House. Watch. Former President Trump has made some pretty wild posts uh, recently on social media. Uh, one of them was that uh, the cocaine found in the White House was had belonged to either the president or his son. Are you willing to say that that's not the case, that they don't belong to them? I, I don't have uh, a response to that because we have to be careful about the Hatch Act. Fox News contributor Joe Concha joins us now. Joe, what is up with that response? That's an odd one because he could have just denied it. Of course, it doesn't of belong to the president. Of course, it's not the president's son. cocaine. Yeah, it's instead he's like, "How do I not answer this question?" Hatch Act, of course. What? Richard Painter, he was with the Bush administration, then he ran for Congress as a Democrat last year, and he had a great answer on this when somebody asked him, "Hey," because he's published several stories about the Hatch Act. He, he says, "Quote: What the." expletive. Does this have to do with the Hatch Act when it pertains to cocaine? This is the most ridiculous invocation of the Hatch Act I've ever heard. Look, Team Biden's just hoping this goes away and the media is there to help. Mm -hmm. Last night, despite new developments in this case, all right, ABC and CBS didn't cover it whatsoever because they totally wouldn't have covered it if this happened under the Trump administration. NBC News gave it 41 seconds. So lather, rinse, repeat. Bias yeah. of omission. And really quickly, the Hatch Act basically says that if you work in the executive branch, you can't use your yeah. podium to campaign for the only the president and vice president can do. So I right. uh, cocaine denial is not campaigning for the president. It's a news story. Precisely. Yeah. And they, they should be answering questions about this regardless if they want to. It's uncomfortable. But you were talking about the, the time spent on the networks. Yeah. Between the the three of them, ABC, CBS, and NBC, 40 seconds, is that really quickly, is that any shock to you that they are just kind of also brushing this under the rug? No, nah, we've seen this movie before, with the Hunter Biden laptop, for example. Anything to do with Hunter Biden, it's like the third rail of journalism. Isn't that concerning that anything negative toward the Biden administration coming into 2024, there, it's like the same story over and over again coming into an election year? It's... Let's not focus on the current president mm -hmm. or his son. Let's concentrate on the guy running against him. Yeah, That's the, always the cover here. And the fact that cocaine was found at the White House is no small thing, especially now that we're learning that it was found in a more secure area than we had heard previously that no normal visitors like you and me can get into. So there are a whole bunch of questions here, and I am also confused as to why the White House isn't answering these questions because the president very well could be a victim in this situation. Mm -hmm. It was found according to the latest reporting, near the situation room. Okay, yeah. so this is no longer, oh, a tourist may have dropped right. it type of situation. And by the way, at first, no one knew what this powder was. It could have been anthrax. Yeah. Precisely. So you know, more people should be taking this seriously. Speaking of answering questions, uh, Media Research Center did some work so that we don't have to, <laughs> analyzing all of Corinne Jean-Pierre's responses from January to June of this year. And when asked about Biden family business dealings, she only gave direct answers 2% of the time. Wow. If Corinne Jean-Pierre ran a funeral parlor, no one would die, right? In other words, this is somebody who, when was the last time you, you guys who do, do this show on a, on a daily basis ever had something newsworthy come out of the daily press briefing? All she does is deflect whatever a story is about. If it's about, say, the Biden scandals, well, that is really under the purview of the Department of Justice. When it comes to cocaine, well, it's really under the purview of the Secret Service. These daily press briefings have become worthless, and reporters in that room who are not named Ducey or Heinrich should be demanding more answers. Don't let her pivot. Continue to press and get some answers for the American people on things that really do matter. Yeah. I'm, you know, I, I want to switch gears here. Um, I want to leave enough time for this. Let's talk about the baby. Yeah. <laughs> no, we'll talk about the baby no. later. Uh, the Angel Studios, Sound of Freedom, mm -hmm. it beat Disney's Indiana Jones, okay? Uh, which I didn't think that was going to happen. But what does that signify to you that Americans are tuning into more of the Sound of Freedom? Sound just, of Freedom is just, about just the title and human trafficking. Right. Just the title itself, mm -hmm. beating something as popular as Indiana Jones, what's that say to you? Let me share some number first before I very give that answer. Indiana Jones's budget was nearly three hundred million dollars. Sound of Freedom budget fifteen million, a fraction. Indiana Bones, I'm sorry, Jones, uh, was released in about forty six hundred theaters. Sound of Fury, twenty six hundred, two thousand less. Yet on July fourth. 
it generated more money at the box office because maybe, just maybe, there is an audience for this kind of content. Mm -hmm. And Disney passed on Sound of Freedom, yeah. and now they're they're paying the price big time by saying, hey, maybe people want to go see an 80-year-old superhero, right, or at least uh, an iconic figure. And instead now, people really are interested in this topic because yeah. it is a major, major issue. Again, mainly happening at the U.S. border that the media also is Yeah, not and it stars uh, Jim Caviezel, who is in Passion of the Christ. There's right. a religious element to this movie as well. It's unfortunate that people are making it out to be a conservative movie because it does have of discussions yeah. about the southern border. Right. It's about child and human sex trafficking. It's not Christian. It's about a very serious issue about children who are suffering in a major way. So uh, I definitely want to see it. And I think that a lot of our viewers will want to see it as well. Triple date tonight. Let's do it. <laughs> you got it. It's Friday. <laughs> Quadruple date. Yeah. Ah, I'm, I'm always a party of two now. <laughs> Joe, thanks for coming in. Joe. Thanks, Joe. Have a good one. All right. I'm Steve Ducey. I'm Brian Kilme. Please join the conversation. Put your comments and suggestions below in the comment section. Thank you for subscribing to this news channel. You will be notified of any breaking news and new post as you become part and parcel of the McCad TV family. Please like and share McCad TV. We love you all. Please support McCad TV Foundation by joining membership and visiting Amazon UK to purchase the displayed books to aid our orphanage projects across Africa.